The following video clip is from Train Signal's VMware vSphere training course, featuring nearly 18 hours of training from a certified VMware V expert. Help you to achieve zero downtime in your infrastructure. Well, first off, fault tolerance provides continuous availability for a virtual machine. In other words, zero downtime. So continuous availability just means, hey, it never goes down. And in my mind, what fault tolerance does is it takes VMHA to the next level. If you think back to my VMHA video, when an ESX server went down, the virtual machines on that ESX server were restarted, but they had to be completely rebooted. So whatever was happening on those virtual machines at the time that the ESX server went down was lost. That doesn't happen with fault tolerance. With fault tolerance, if an ESX server goes down, a virtual machine that's protected by fault tolerance will just continue running on a different ESX server with zero data loss and zero impact to the end users. Now, fault tolerance works for just about every application that I can think of and 99% of guest operating systems that VMware currently runs on. And I'll be showing you a matrix of the guest operating systems that it supports and any caveats related to those. All right, so fault tolerance works by creating this live shadow copy of the running virtual machine and then keeping them in lockstep using VMware's vLockstep technology. So vLockstep actually can see what's being processed in the CPU on that virtual machine and it shadows all those CPU changes and sends them over to the secondary copy of this fault tolerant protected virtual machine. So by doing this, if an ESX server fails, then the shadow virtual machine or the secondary virtual machine will take over and the applications won't lose a beat. And even better, a brand new shadow or another secondary copy of that virtual machine is created inside the cluster on another ESX server. Not the server that failed, but yet another ESX server. So now you have this third copy of the virtual machine created on a new ESX server because the first ESX server failed. That copy was lost. The second copy is now the running virtual machine. And the third copy is now the new shadow copy or the new secondary version of that virtual machine. All right, so here's a graphic to help us illustrate how fault tolerance works, courtesy of VMware.com. So the primary virtual machine is called that. It's called the primary. And then the copied or lock-stepped virtual machine is called the secondary. Now the virtual disk for the virtual machine is on shared storage and never moves. So the virtual disk again is on a storage area network, either iSCSI fiber channel or it could be a NFS NAS, and that virtual disk never moves. What's being synchronized or copied from the primary to the secondary ESX host are all the changes that happen to the CPU and all the changes that happen in RAM on that virtual machine. And to me, this is really just like continuous vMotion. You've seen vMotion in this video series and how all it does is it moves the running system image of a virtual machine from one ESX server to another. Now with fault tolerance, it does the same thing, but it just keeps on doing it. It just continuously replicates the running image of that virtual machine from the primary to the secondary ESX server. All right, so in this graphic here, we have an ESX server, and it's running two copies, uh, two primary virtual machines. And using fault tolerance, those are being replicated over to uh, one secondary server and another secondary server. So it doesn't have to be just an A and a B server. You can have multiple virtual machines on one server replicated to a variety of other ESX servers, but there's just going to be one primary and one secondary copy of each of those virtual machines. So if this ESX server fails here, then the secondary ESX host that's running the secondary copy of the virtual machine will take over for that virtual machine. And then this virtual machine that was being replicated over here, this secondary ESX server will take over the running copy of that virtual machine. And then if this virtual machine here in the center wasn't protected by fault tolerance, it would still be in the VMHA cluster and then it would be rebooted again because it was not protected by fault tolerance. Now VMware's fault tolerance is truly an amazing feature of vSphere, but also because it's so new, it relies on advanced features of some of the newer server hardware. So because of that, there's a number of requirements related to fault tolerance. And the first one is that the CPUs on all the fault tolerant ESX servers must match. So they must be from a specific list of processors. And I have a knowledge base article I'd like to show you now that shows that list of processors. 
All right, so here's a VMware Knowledge Base article, and I've got the link to this article along with all the other links I'm going to show you in this video in the reference for my fault tolerance video that you're watching. So if we scroll down here in this Knowledge Base article, it's called Processors and Guest Operating Systems that Support VMware Fault Tolerance. So if we scroll on down here, there's actually a list of the family of different processors that support fault tolerance. You can see it's only the Intel Xeon-based Core 2 microarchitecture, the 3100 series, 33, 52, 54, and 7400. Or you could use the Xeon-based processors. Those are the Intel 5500 series. That's what I'm actually using in this video. And then you can also use AMD processors, the 1300, 2300, and 8300 series. They have to be very strict on the processor requirements because fault tolerance takes advantage of timing features in the processors. And I'll be showing you a utility that will go out and check your processor to tell you if it's compatible with fault tolerance here in just a little bit. So you don't have to worry about running out to check your processor numbers or anything like that. You can just use this tool. All right, the second requirement here is that hardware virtualization must be enabled in the BIOS. All the hosts that will be providing fault tolerance services must be in an HA cluster. And then they have a recommended minimum number of 1 gig Ethernet NICs on each server, and that number is 3. So they recommend a minimum number of 3 gig Ethernet NICs on each server, and that's to break out the fault tolerant logging traffic onto its own NIC. It's not a hard requirement, it is a soft requirement. But if you're going to use fault tolerance in production, you do want the fault tolerant logging on its own 1 gig NIC. Now the ESX servers must be running the same build of vSphere. The virtual machines must be on a shared SAN accessible by all the servers. And then you must be using vSphere Edition Advanced Enterprise or Enterprise Plus. All right, now let's talk about some of the constraints of fault tolerance. And again, it's a truly amazing product, but it's so new, it still has a number of constraints that you need to be aware of. The first one is that only a single virtual CPU in each virtual machine is supported. In other words, no symmetric multiprocessing is allowed on the virtual machines that will be protected by fault tolerance. Again, I talked about how it requires specific server hardware, and there is a soft limitation. There's a recommended minimum of four virtual machines protected by fault tolerance on a single ESX server. Now, those ESX servers need to be line of sight. In other words, they need to be most likely in the same room or at least connected with this one gig Ethernet link. Currently, fault tolerance is being tested in metro scenarios where there's a little bit higher level of latency, but they still have very high bandwidth. But that's not a recommended scenario yet by VMware. Now, only thick disk on the virtual machines are supported. You cannot use thin provisioning on virtual machines that have fault tolerance and then snapshots are not allowed on those virtual machines. And some guest operating systems are not supported, and some guests require you to shut down before you can enable fault tolerance. Let's tab back to that VMware Knowledge Base article. And if we scroll down here, I have a list of guest operating systems in this same article. And you can see here we have a list of guest operating systems down the left-hand side. And then we have three columns based on the type of processor that you have. So if you have the Intel Xeon based, this is your column. If you have the i7 micro architecture, this is your column. And then if you have AMD third generation Opteron, this is your column. So some operating systems, for example, let's say Solaris 10 32-bit, are not supported running fault tolerance on AMD third generation Opteron. And then if you're using the Intel Xeon-based Core i7 microarchitecture, you can see here that all the guest operating systems do support fault tolerance, but the slash off here means that the virtual machine must be powered off before fault tolerance is enabled. Now that's also the case over here with the Intel Xeon 45 Core 2 microarchitecture, but only when it comes to Windows 2000 and Windows NT4. Hopefully you aren't still using those operating systems. All the other operating systems listed here, uh, you can enable fault tolerance without a reboot. All right, before we move on, I have a few documents I want to point out to you up here in my web browser. The first one is the vSphere Availability Guide, and there is a huge section here on fault tolerance. And I really encourage you to check out the Availability Guide because it's got a lot of great information covering fault tolerance. All right, the second one here is a white paper from VMware on protecting mission-critical workloads with VMware fault tolerance. This is a great white paper, especially to show to your CIO or CEO if you need money to implement fault tolerance in your infrastructure. It's got a lot of good information. I've got another knowledge base article here called Understanding Fault Tolerance 
uh, which goes into uh, many of the hardware and prerequisites that are related to fault tolerance. And then we have the knowledge base article here that we just